Asalaamu Alaikum and welcome to your views on the news with me Azhar Ali. It's been a week uh, since soldier Lee Rigby was killed in broad daylight in Woolwich by men claiming to be avenging the deaths of Muslims abroad. Since then, reports of Islamophobic incidents have soared, including 10 attacks on mosques and a series of protests by far-right groups have taken place across the country. Meanwhile, the government has responded to the murder by setting up a task force to address the radicalization of Muslims. Emily Churchill has more. As the first suspect arrived in court today, the killing of British soldier Lee Rigby last Wednesday is still very much at the forefront of public consciousness in the UK. Well-wishers continue to leave flowers at the spot where the 25-year-old was killed in a brutal attack near his army barracks in Woolwich in south-east London. Michael Adebowale, one of the two men shot at the scene by police, appeared in court today, charged with his murder. The second man, Michael Adebolajo, is still in hospital. Although the motive for the attack has yet to be proven, it is being treated as an act of terrorism. This country will be absolutely resolute in its stand against violent extremism and terror. We will never give in to terror or terrorism in any of its forms. Second, this view is shared by every community in our country. This was not just an attack on Britain and on the British way of life. It was also a betrayal of Islam and of the Muslim communities who give so much to our country. But as the community in Woolwich tries to get back to normal daily life, the attack has reignited a heated debate about how extremism should be dealt with. Downing Street has announced it will set up a new task force to review the government's counter-extremism strategy and that it will target radical Islamic preachers in prisons, schools, colleges and mosques. This attack was an The Home Secretary Theresa May said the task force should consider granting the government further powers to ban organisations it judges to be inciting hatred and division, even if they don't condone violence. May is also trying to revive the controversial communications data bill, which would force internet service providers to hand over information about the online activity of ordinary citizens. But the MI5 says the bill would not have helped prevent Lee Rigby's murder, and it is not alone in warning against knee-jerk reactions to last week's events. In a statement on Sunday, the Muslim Council of Britain said, We must be vigilant and ensure we do not inadvertently give in to the demands of all extremists, making our society less free, divided and suspicious of each other. Lessons from the past indicate that policies and measures taken in haste can exacerbate extremism. One reaction some worry will be counterproductive was that of Boris Johnson, shown here visiting a London mosque earlier this month. Writing in the Daily Telegraph newspaper, the London mayor said universities should stop Islamic societies holding gender-segregated meetings and should monitor their activities more closely. Criticising what he termed the virus of Islamism, he also called the idea of universal Sharia law mumbo-jumbo and accused Islamists of wanting to create a sexist and homophobic Muslim caliphate, language some fear will stir rather than ease community tensions. As tributes continue to pour in for the young soldier who lost his life last week, the divisions over what, if anything, should be done in response will last long after the flowers have gone. Emily Churchill, Islam Channel. Well, one of the suspects has been charged with murder and not terrorism, though we understand it is being treated as such. So how have you found the responses to last week's incident? What do you make of this task force that the government wants to establish? And have we been here before? And what about the stories emerging about how much our security services knew of this individual and the alleged torture he suffered in Kenya? Well, I'd love to hear all of your views uh, on all of this. Inshallah, I'm not going to take your calls in this segment. After the Maghrib Salah, I will take your calls. So um, we've only got about nine minutes before Maghrib. But you'd be happy to know to discuss all of this and respond to some of your questions we have in the studio. Uh, Seamus Milne, who's a Guardian columnist and associate editor, Muhammad Amin, who's the vice chairman of the Conservative Muslim Forum, and Masood Shahjara, who's the chair of the Islamic Human Rights Commission. Uh, Salaam alaikum and good evening to you all for joining me. Um, Seamus, maybe if I can start with you. Um, how, how do you think the response by the government has been to this uh, incident? Well, I think the, the term knee-jerk doesn't really quite um, match the scale of the repetition that, that we've had of previous 
um, such incidents, and particularly after what happened in 2005, in Ju July 2005, here in London. I think, you know, the setting up a task force, the, the call to ban organizations and clamp down on websites. I mean, this is just repeating, in a way, what's been happening over the last 10 years and happened under the previous government. And really, I don't think that's, uh, you know, going to measure up to the, the problem at all. I think partly it, it, it's an attempt to divert attention from what really is the cause and the driver of these uh, kinds of attacks, which is Britain's role um, in wars in the Muslim world. And uh, it also just simply won't address the problem. It risks fueling Islamophobia in the country, which, as we've seen in the last week, has had a real spike. Uh, because it, instead of pointing at what's actually going on and actually what's happening and why it's happening, mm. it's encouraging the idea that this is a problem between Muslims and non-Muslims in Britain, that Muslims can't a integrate. clash of uh, civilization maybe being... Exactly. You see the opinion polls that show that the majority of people in this country you know, tragically believe that that's the case. And I think that's fueled by the media, it's fueled by politicians. Mm. And it's partly reflects a, a refusal to accept, you know, why these attacks have happened okay. and why they continue to happen. Mohammed Amin, I mean, uh, uh, do you agree with what Seamus is saying in terms of the government's response? Not entirely. First, first of all, the government has been thinking about how to take prevention of violent extremism forward ever since the new prevent strategy document was issued in June of, I think it was 2011. Mm. And ever since we've been waiting for more details about the strategy, I think what this terrible incident has done is make the government realize it needs to come forward with that strategy more quickly. Mm. Okay, and Masood, in terms of uh, uh, not just focusing on the government, uh, because we are coming out to break, I just wanna get a sense from you, how do you think the community has uh, responded to this incident? Well, I think, I think, you know, as you said, we've been here before, 9-11, 7-7, and uh, now, and, and, you know, many incidents before, in between that. Uh, I, I think, really, the scale is not just the issue that Seamus said, but also from the community has been very bad. Mm. You know, uh, bad we in... are not... Bad in, in the sense that uh, we have failed to come out and actually address issues, look at this, analyze it, and actually uh, look in deeply to see what was the cause of it. All these uh, sort of things that are being, mumble jumbles are being told on mm -hmm. how to prevent, it, it really would not have prevented this, you know, mm -hmm. neither the communication bill or indeed this was someone who was known to the uh, police and the security. He was interviewed, he was arrested, and the information is, is passed, and then he was uh, recruited, tried to recruit him. That sort of drive of trying to recruit him could have actually caused mm. the fact that, you know, they took their eyes off someone like this, which actually enabled him to go further. The other issue is that uh, what is happening is that uh, anyone, especially from Muslim community, if we try to look at the causes, we are being told that we are uh, justifying the act. Mm. This is not true. We okay. all have got a stake and we need to look at the causes and find Okay. Ways forward. So, sorry to interrupt you there. Yes. Um, we're going to uh, go for a short break. Um, well, uh, an azan break, uh, inshallah, after the azan. Uh, we shall be back. Um, do join us. The phone lines will be open then. And I think uh, we've just uh, started the discussions. I'd love to hear your views on all of those areas in terms of the community response, uh, how the government has uh, responded, what role the media played, positive or negative. Um, and really, maybe you can also suggest really how we should respond to this. See you after the break. Assalamualaikum, welcome back to Your Views on the News with me, Azad Ali. Now, just before the break, we were just discussing with my guests some of the responses. Um, and Masood, you mentioned about the community response. Um, you, you know, you, you were saying some of it was bad. We're not really addressing uh, the issue. Um, if I can uh, then push you uh, on that, because the government's announced uh, this task force. Um, you know, what, what do you think of this task force? Uh, th this is designed to deal with the issues. We have seen many things <coughs> set up in past previous governments and now knee-jerk reaction. And as Seamus said, this one is actually sort of uh, makes the really extreme uh, case of it. And the reality is that you cannot neither fight terrorism or extremism without defining what you mean. Extremism means different things to different people, you know? And, and uh, you know, some people even in our own community say that so-and-so is extremist because he prays five times a day, mm. let alone the view outside. So without that definition, we are actually really getting into a very 
muddy water. We're really not going to be able to address the issue. That also, the thing is this, that this is always only concentrates on the Muslim community. Mm. You know, even when we've been dragged into the TV station, we don't see the daylight of TV station until something goes bang. And then we're all dragged, you know, and, and the first thing is demanded of us to, uh, you know, condemn and so forth, to the extent that we're associating ourselves with those acts mm. in, psychologically. Mm. You know, I find it offensive for to be asked to condemn such a horrible, horrible thing. I mean, you know, of course I condemn it. Mm. You know, to be actually asked over and over to condemn it, mm. it means that there's something inherently wrong with my belief that I actually have to go and show. You have to prove yourself. Yeah, prove myself. I'm, mm. I'm really sick and tired of it. I mean, okay. the reality is, uh, you know, many acts take place. Two weeks before, a 75-year-old was hacked to death on the way to Masjid in Birmingham. Nobody made such a big uh, fuss about it. And nobody is really following that type mm. of extremism. The other issue that I'm really sort of concerned is that, you know, when you look at the statistic of terrorism, both in Europe and the United States, year in, year out, uh, Europol shows that uh, those committed by Muslim is only 1% or 2%. Mm. And sometimes it's actually 0.5% uh, of acts of terrorism that takes place. But perception is that, you know, and then you heard this, if not every Muslim is a terrorist, but every terrorist is a Muslim, this mm. actually is a false perception. Uh, percept that actually it exists in the mind of the government, people, and it's been um, nurtured. Mm. I mean, we used to have race card being played. Now we have, uh, you know, Islamophobia card mm. being played because, you know, last, uh, the YouGov, um, uh, actually there was a poll, and it shows that 37% of Brits are saying they will vote for a political party that will be committed to reducing the number of Muslims in this country. Okay. Well, that, on, on, on that point, uh, I mean, the comments uh, some of the uh, politicians have made, I mean, we saw in our news report what Boris Johnson had to say, Mohammed Amin, uh, you know, about Islamism, mumbo jumbo, uh, all, all of these kind of things. The, the perception is, uh, um, and even the Prime Minister, if you like, it was on the day he, he kind of said uh, it's, it's, it's a perversion of Islam, it's got nothing to do with Islam, and then the next day he kind of uh, kind of almost uh, announcing a task force to deal with Islam. Um, this, this kind of mixed signals. Uh, it, is it being helpful? Well, let's take what the Prime Minister said. He was absolutely categorical that this was an attack on Islam as well as an attack on Britain. And this task force is not a task force about Islam. It's a task force about extremism. And the two are well, fundamentally different. To, 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 to be different. fair, it, it is about extremism, but it was said about extremism in the Muslim community. Uh, those were the words used. And then you had the Home Secretary mentioning about preachers of hate. I mean, the focus, as Masood said, that's how it came across. Um, yeah, that's what it is. Now, if the, if the government was looking at extremism as a whole, there was no mention of the English Defence League. There was no mention of the far right. Or maybe I'm wrong. I think you're missing things, because mm. I've, I've been reading my electronic mail, my electronic newspaper sources, my Twitter feeds, and there's been a great deal of condemnation of the EDL. And by ministers? Uh, by a lot of the people that I've read. But ha have, have any ministers condemned the EDL? Uh, I don't have you know, these things yeah. memorised, but it's yeah. quite clear that the government does not have any sympathy whatsoever for the EDL and regards them as part of the problem. Mm. Well, uh, Seamus, I mean, uh, th th this is one of the problems. The perception in the Muslim community is, um, I mean, Muhammad, I mean, uh, he, he doesn't know. I mean, I don't know either if, if any minister has condemned uh, the English Defence League. I'm sure I would have picked it up in some report. But the perception the Muslim community has is that, you know, as Masood said, is that there's an expectation that we have to come out and condemn uh, all of these things because it's kind of uh, associated with our community somehow. But, you know, for, for example, the activities of the English Defence League, uh, is, these are far-right act, uh, activities. These are conservative activities, if you like. Um, we don't see the Conservative Party or those in the Conservatives uh, coming out and disassociating themselves from, from the far-right. No, I agree with you. I mean, it's, uh, I think it's uh, very dangerous. I think it helps to create the impression that this is a Muslim problem in Britain, that the problem in Britain is a problem of Muslims, rather than a problem of a small minority which reacts to Britain's wars in the Muslim world in a particularly uh, violent way. 
And, uh, you know, I, I haven't heard any condemnation of the EDL in the last few days. Uh, there may have been some, but that was not the entire thrust of the response to this, mm. this attack last week, as we all know. The entire response is about, and this is another worrying aspect of it, it's not just about the violence, which people would be, I think, much more likely to accept if there was a, a concentration on how to tackle violent groups or individuals. I think many more people would accept that. The problem is, and this is particularly, the, it started under the last government, but particularly under this government, mm. happened two years ago and it's been strengthened this week, is the targeting is on so-called non-violent extremism. And as Masood said, the definitions of, of extremism will vary very wildly. It includes often in government uh, discourse and, and approaches, um, all manner of things which have got nothing to do with violent attacks at all. It's to do with social conservatism, mm. opposition to British foreign policy and wars in the Muslim world, as well as things that other people might accept well, to be Bo extreme. Boris mentioned there uh, Islamic societies and segregation. Is that, is that a form of extremism that uh, should be dealt with? I believe... Is that extremism first and foremost? Uh, if people are forced to sit segregated at events at British universities, that is something I regard as extremism. If people want to sit separately, men and women separately, as long as there's a space for men and women who want to sit together to sit together, that's fine. Well, if, if I, the I situation have, sorry, is this, I, I, so, I, sorry, Masood, if the situation is this, that a program is held by an Islamic society where they give options for women to sit uh, in a women-only yep. area, men to sit in a men-only area, and an area where people can sit uh, that's fine. however they want. Is that a, a form of extremism? No, that's fine. It's that, that is exactly what happens in the universities. So why is Actually, Boris Johnson picking this no, up? My understanding think? is that at, on occasions there are events where segregation is forced. OK. No, no, I, I, I will I, let I, you come in, but more importantly, I have to let my callers come in because um, they are uh, waiting uh, very patiently on the phone, and I'm uh, sorry I haven't oh. come to you earlier. Let's go to Ahmed. Uh, from Leeds first. Salaam alaikum, Ahmed. Wa alaikum salam. I just want to uh, give my contribution to what you're talking about. Um, when the IRA were carrying out their terrorist attacks mm. in the 70s and 80s, I can't recollect uh, any Irish groups or Catholic groups having to go on TV and apologise uh, for the acts of, the, of, a, of a few. Mm. Um, that's one thing that I want to highlight here. I think that Although this uh, murder that took place last week was tragic and uh, we should be condemning it, we should be condemning it as human beings, not necessarily as a particular group of people. Mm. Um, the other thing is <clears throat> when Stephen Lawrence was murdered by several white uh, youth, did uh, white people, you know, white young men feel they had to come out and apologise mm. for what took place? Why is it the Muslims uh, tripping over themselves mm. to apologise? Mm. but actually what is essentially uh, an act of murder, uh, not necessarily terrorism, as you've said at the start of the programme, one of the people uh, involved in this incident has been charged uh, with a criminal act of murder mm. as opposed to terrorism. I don't understand why we're getting into this kind of, you know, falling into this trap uh, of, of uh, being apologists okay. for this really inhumane act. OK. Uh, you, you know? Yeah, well, th thank you, Ahmed. Uh, I will put your points to uh, yeah. our guests. Let's go to our next caller, uh, Wazir from uh, Birmingham. Hello, Assalamu alaikum, Wazir. Hello, Assalamu alaikum. OK, we've lost uh, Wazir. Let's go to Jacob, who's calling from Wessex. Hello. Uh, Essex, uh, even, sorry, not Wessex. Hi, Jacob. Hello. I'll be brief, as, as brief as I can, because sure. I know you've got a lot of calls. I've phoned you before. No worries. Um, Go for it. I, I do, this is my belief, and many other people's, um, your apologies from the Muslim community are far too late. There's been far too much happening. You say it's peaceful religion, etc. Um, look at the involvement of America, other countries around the world. You're killing each other in mm. other countries and you, you, uh, Iraq called America in, we supported them and they rejoiced when Saddam Hussein's statue was walked out. Don't tell me it's a peaceful religion. I've had a hate crime, as I told you before, connections verified it with a Muslim, a group of Muslims with my daughter under age sex and then wanted to put a hijab on her and um, I could carry on and on. Did, and sorry, on. sorry, Jacob, did you someone... Talking did, about the government, please make me make this point. Not everybody's... I wasn't, I was just going to clarify at something. At all, they yeah. caused the problem. And then my last point is, when you say you're peaceful, read the Quran. There's pictures in it about Jews and non-Muslims, and it's been very nice recently walking around without seeing hijabs walking about all over the place. 
Okay. Uh, you're well, no, no worries, uh, Jacob. By, um, Mohammed. Can, Jacob, can I, uh, Jacob, just one minute. Can I just ask you one, one point of clarification? Old. Jacob, what one point of clarification. Mohammed Did you say someone by... tried to force your daughter to wear hijab? Jacob? Okay. I wanted to clarify that point. Never mind. Okay, Jacob's gone. Let's see uh, who's on the line. One more call and I'll come back to my panel, inshallah. Um, hello, assalamu alaikum. I believe Wazir is back. Hi, Wazir? Yeah, hello. Um, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. You're uh, on air. Basically, I'm, I've been listening, you know, attentively to your, everyone saying, and uh, the chap with the uh, beard and glasses, he's speaking a lot of sense. Um, the, the callers earlier on, I mean, this is a very complex issue. Mm. Uh, what happened to Lee Rigby is the frustration that certain Muslims are feeling, not just in this country, but throughout the world. When you look at Israel and Afghanistan and uh, Burma and Iraq and all, you know, Muslims are dying every day. Mm. And for people to phone in and say Islam is not a peaceful religion, we have to look at the politics. People, all these people are doing is going into countries where they can gain from it. Why don't they go into Syria? Why are they taking so long to go into Syria? Mm. So this is extremely complex. I mean, there's a lot of anomalies to this. When you look at the Lee Rigby murder, they said, oh, there's a bomb in the house. The bomb didn't go off. Where was the bomb? Mm. Then the guys were shot by the police. Apparently, one of those guys was supposed to have a gun. Mm. If you look at the video, they attacked the police with the knives and the, uh, the butcher uh, thing, whatever they had. Mm. Why didn't they just shoot the police? So okay. why just why have all these terrorists and everything that's happened, they've just come underneath these, they'll be hiding underneath these stones and they've just appeared all of a sudden. What's going on politically behind the screens? Okay. Who thank is gaining from this? Okay, thank you, Wazir. Um, all uh, of this. Jazakallah khair for your uh, uh, call. You. I'm going to take one more and then I'll definitely come back to the panel. Um, Margaret uh, Dove uh, is on the line from Devon. Hi, Margaret. Hello. Hi, you're on air. Your views, please. I'm just trying to... I hope you realise that not all non-Muslim people feel like Jacob, who called earlier. Sure. I'm very angry that he could feel such a way. Mm. Um... Totally agree with James Mill's views. Mm. Um, there are ignorant people in all walks of life. And we mustn't say all Muslims are a bit like what happened mm. a few days ago. Mm. I'm just so angry yeah. that people can, well, just. We're all humans, aren't mm. we? Yeah, We're all the same. We yeah. all want the same from life. Yeah. And we mustn't... I mean, I, I do totally agree as well with what they were saying about the EDL. Mm. I think the government needs to concentrate on them a little bit more. Mm. OK, Margaret? That's all I have to say. Th thank you very much for your call. OK, um, if, I, if I come back to uh, my guest... Uh, uh, Seamus, I mean, the, the, one of the points that was made about was um, how Muslims are tripping over themselves to apologise. Um, and also how, th th as a community, they're being highlighted. Uh, you you, you kind of never got that with other forms of uh, terrorism or causes where they expanded it to uh, the entire community. Those uh, people would argue, actually, the Irish community did suffer uh, similar yeah, to Yeah, I mean, to I, the I would say community. that's not, not quite right. I mean, uh, during the IRA campaign, I think the... Irish community was targeted very heavily. There was a lot of anti-Irish bigotry uh, at the time, which really spilled out in, in quite extreme ways after particular atrocities. Mm. Um, and you had the same thing where uh, Irish community leaders were under a lot of pressure to um, to make special denunciations in a way that other communities were not, and uh, perhaps not on quite the same scale, I think it's true, but it, it definitely was happening. But I'm, I'm very glad that Margaret made the points she did because the caller you had, Jacob, I, I think what he was saying, Jacob from Essex, uh, it was really the, uh, the true voice of um, Islamophobia in its 
in its extreme form uh, in Britain that we're seeing a lot of in the last week. It's very, very ignorant. It's something that uh, is not applied at all to other religions. I think if Jacob would consider for a second, you know, when uh, there is an attack by a white person like there was um, against the uh, elderly Muslim man last month in Birmingham who was stabbed to death uh, were you know was was Jacob blaming Christianity or all white people for that uh, when Israel uh, launches uh, uh, violent attacks in the occupied territories or in the Middle East does he blame Judaism for that uh, does he blame Christianity for these uh, wars that are being waged in the Muslim world by Britain and America and other Western countries? No, he doesn't, and he's and he should make the same, uh, apply the same logic to Islam and and mm. Muslims. Okay, and uh, Muhammad, uh, the, the, a lot of the callers, or some of the callers, made the point about the way this whole thing was covered by the media. I mean, you had you had a very intense moment in the first day and the following day of the gruesomeness. Uh, you know, uh, there was words like beheading news and bombs and everything else. I mean, it, it raised the fear to a level uh, where, personally, I think, in my experience, uh, from 7-7 to the Woolwich one, uh, the Woolwich one felt far more scarier than uh, the 7-7 uh, incident itself. It was gruesome because these killers wanted to maximise the publicity. There is far more opportunity for publicity. Everybody's got a camera phone, shooting videos. The, and that is why we got wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Mm. But I want to come back to this point about apologies. I mean, the cons I wrote the Conservative Muslim Forum statement about this the afternoon or the evening that it happened. Mm. And we weren't apologising. We are condemning mm. because I felt utterly outraged. And what I've said in that statement is not only do, do the killers have to answer before courts you know, in this country, one day they will have to answer to God. Mm. We have killers here who are calling out Allahu Akbar while killing somebody. Mm. And that is utterly offensive. It is offensive, but the, the point I think they were trying to make is who, or who does similar things, for example, when the 75-year-old man was killed, who came out and We don't even it. know who killed that 75-year-old man yet. Well, this is, this is the, the, the point, isn't it? That we don't know, maybe an excuse, but there are lots of crimes being committed by others. And also Muslims are also committing other crimes as well. Why do we have to, the point is, why do we have to then expand it or expand the collective guilt to the religion? What we have is, is, here is two people, just like the 7-7 bombers. If you, I encourage you to go and watch their suicide videos or read the transcripts. Mm. We have people who claim completely wrongly, but claim to be acting in the name of Islam. Are they? Yes, they Masoud, are. Do they say exactly that in the video? I, first all, I mean, first well, all, from the Woolwich one, I recall yeah. him being very specific about why he was uh, doing what he did. Yeah, he and he actually apologised that women had to yeah. uh, see this gruesome Look, act. I, I, I think, I think we, there has to be a time for us to analyse all these things away from prejudices. Mm. The reality is that both 7-7 seven, seven and these guys, um, twisted as they were, they were saying that we're doing this because you've done this to us. That was, that was their logic. That is the basic logic that comes across. Now, we have to actually understand this and look at it and analyze it as it is. Mm. And, and that hasn't been done this time. Actually, it was being done more so after 7-7. Mm. And, and the other thing is that, you know, look at the barbaric act that has been played against the Muslim community. That is, 11 mosques has been attacked. Mm. You know, I actually wrote to the commissioner, uh, uh, Metropolitan Police Commissioner, immediately saying, look, we've been here, and uh, this thing is happening. You are saying you're going to increase the security for barracks. Barracks are soldiers in it, trained to not only defend themselves, mm. but defend the rest of us. Mm. Where is sort of defense for the mosque, the madrasas, nurseries, which mm. they're going to be needed? Mm. And, and nothing was going on. And also we send them a whole lot of tweets which were actually inciting to murder Muslims. Mm. Nothing was done on those bases. Mm. You know, this is actually creating this concept of us and them. Our safety and security is not really taken paramount. If there were two synagogues attacked, you know, there would have been every synagogue would have got uh, security. And indeed, rightly so. Mm. But we are not getting anything because we are actually seen as a bunch of, uh, you know, terrorists. And, and, you know, although I said the mm. statistic shows that actually majority of terrorists, both in Europe and the United States, are not from the Muslim background. And indeed, you know, every community, every community has got uh, people within it 
which actually behave badly. Mm. And, and, and Islam and Muslims are not the exception to that. Okay. Um, I, I know, Muhammad, I mean, you want to come in, uh, yes. but it'd be very unfair of me to give you like 10 seconds to respond. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to save uh, what you're going to say for after the break. Um, we are coming up to uh, a break, viewers. Uh, we'd love to hear more from you. Um, Inshallah, we'll be uh, straight back after a short break. And I want to hear a little bit more uh, about what Masood has just touched upon in terms of, you know, how do you feel uh, that the government has responded to the backlash that's taken place towards the community? Uh, and do you feel sufficiently reassured by the police in your area that, you know, maximum uh, uh, effort is being put in to your uh, safety and security? Because uh, uh, that's also important. But of course, if you want to touch on any of the other topics, um, I'm very happy to hear that as well. The number is on the bottom of your screen, inshallah. So we're going to take a short break and I shall see you after the break. Assalamu alaikum.